I have to say it now. It's been a good life all in all. It's really fine to have the chance to hang around. For a while now, John Denver songs have been randomly popping into my head. Then recently, John himself popped into my meditation. He didn't have a lot to say, but it was a delight to spend a few moments basking in his energy. John begins, you know, some people might think I led a charmed life. And in some ways, I guess I did. I was blessed to be tuned into a power greater than myself, which allowed me to create truth and beauty set to music. Still in all, there were tough times. I went through many of my own dark nights of the soul. It's part of the journey, coming to terms with self-doubt and the fear of not measuring up to others, or even to myself for that matter. He paused in reflection. I asked, when you reached the end of the journey, were you satisfied with what you'd accomplished? John responded, oh, golly gee, yes. So much more than I ever imagined was possible. And I'm extremely grateful. The mountains nourished my soul and helped me open up to connect with higher consciousness. That was thrilling. The grind of touring and promoting, not so much. They're a great disruptor to regular life. That's why it was such a delight when well-known performers recorded my songs. It made my soul sing to hear their interpretations of my work, and I celebrated their success right along with them. Although I have to admit, it sure did feel good performing for audiences who got my music and expressed appreciation. Everyone needs some personal validation now and again. That mocking voice of doubt was an all too frequent visitor, tormenting like the devil. When he came visiting, whispering in my ear, keeping me up at night, I'm ashamed to say I made some bad choices that hurt some of the ones I loved the most. Now in the background comes the voice of Maya Angelou whispering, when you know better, you do better. We all got our demons, John. He smiled and chuckled. Yep, that's for sure. Funny how some things don't matter now. So many things I thought were important were really just trivial. He shakes his head with a wry smile. One day, you'll all be woke enough to see the greater truth and stop falling victim to that old taunting devil of self-doubt. You're already moving forward by leaps and bounds. It's a downright joy to behold. I'm really quite excited to see how this story turns out. I asked, are you presently incarnated in another body? Nope, I'm taking my time waiting for the great shift. That will be a mighty fine time to reemerge and this time, it's going to be a very different experience because I know I'll jump into that body and be more woke. I asked, do you have a favorite amongst all your songs? He rubs his chin, pausing to consider. Nope, can't say I could pick just one. When a song is channeled, there's a sacredness about it that defies comparison. They're like perfect sparkling diamonds, each equal to the other. I asked, do you still enjoy spending time in the mountains or are you content with the present realm where you exist? John responded, absolutely. They're a part of me. And I still enjoy returning to soak up that magical energy to feel the crisp breeze upon my cheeks, to inhale the panoply of scents. Wait, did I get that right? Did you really say panoply? John responded, what? You think an old country boy like me wouldn't know a big word like panoply? He threw back his head and laughed heartily. Okay, I replied, just check in. I wanna be sure I translate your words precisely. Fair enough, he said with a wink. Is there anything more you'd like to share, I inquired. Just then the phone rang, interrupting the flow. When I returned, we picked up the conversation. Sorry for the interruption, John, I apologized. With a smile, he said, that's quite all right. Where were we? I responded, can I ask you another question? John said, I've got the time if you do. Do you regret that your life as John Denver was cut short? With conviction, John said, oh, heck no. 
I exited at the exact time that was right for me. That was just one more chapter in my soul book, and there are plenty more to come. Do I wish I'd had more time with my family? Sure. But you got to realize I never left them. I still keep tabs on what they're up to. We'll always be connected. I'm sorry for the pain my passing caused them, but that's an inevitable part of living. Plus, I'm pretty busy over here in soul school preparing for my next go around. There's not a thing I have to regret or complain about. All good things come in time, and time is limitless. From over here, you can see into infinity and beyond. And beyond, I questioned? Well, not literally, he said, but you get that sense of reality being unencumbered by a body. Is there anything else, I asked, because I'm starting to hear this guitar strains of Rocky Mountain High, and it, it sort of feels like his energy has departed. I guess that's as perfect a curtain call as there can be. But still, I wasn't ready to end the conversation. It felt incomplete. So I asked, John, can you come back? Isn't there some profound quote or observation you'd like to end our conversation with? He briefly came back, shook his head, waved and said, so long. Then he sent me a vision of his older self wearing a tuxedo as he appeared with Frank Sinatra on their TV special. He's got a twinkle in his eye and I hear the refrain of poems, prayers and promises. Thanks for the music and the memories, John. Well, that was the end of our conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. John is someone who left us far too soon and he's still deeply missed. The voice of an angel and the heart as big as the Rocky Mountains that he loved so much. Thanks for watching. This is Deborah Lupien, voice of the Akashic Records. Till next time, bye.